Welcome to another episode of Road Patina. Today on the show, we are gonna start working on the GC8. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell below so you don't miss any new episodes. We are gonna start with the fuel system today. We are going to dig in, get our hands dirty, no more story time, we are gonna get this project started. Decided to keep the car, I have not yet been able to drive it to its full capacity and enjoy it. So what we're gonna do is we are going to fix everything it needs, get it to the shop, get it tuned, put it on the dyno, and we're gonna go out and enjoy it. Let me show you the parts that we have in store for today's episode. And here are the goodies, let's check them out. So we went with the injector dynamics, 1050X injectors, recommended by every single Subaru tuner in the world. All right, let's check out what we have. Got the pin connectors. We're not gonna end up using these because the injectors that I have on it now, the Bosch 1000s come with the pigtail. That should just plug in. We're gonna get some information, some stickers, and there they are. Those are super fancy. And over here, we have the Deutsch Works 300 fill pump. Came with a kit. So we got some plugs, clips, worm clamps, tube, little harness, and there is the fill pump. Not much to it. W300. There it is. Let's get started. I'm gonna start with the driver side. Um, as you can see, there is a little bolt right down there that holds the fuel rail down, and then there is a couple more bolts um, up here, tucked down in there. You can see the two bolts down there, and uh, I think we might have to remove the intercooler pipe to get to it. Shouldn't be too bad. It's only a couple bolts and a couple clamps. Uh, we're going to try to sneak under there and get it without removing that, but you can see it's pretty tight. There's a lot going on down here. Um, so, let's give it a shot. one out here's the difference between the two injectors on the left we have the injector dynamics 1050 X and over here we have the on the right the botch 1000 and before you install the injectors you're gonna to to put a little bit of grease on the o-rings just a little bit so it helps slide in there. And when you are putting the fill row back in, you don't want to just push on it super hard. You just basically want to put it in place and then tighten it down. You push on the fill rail too hard, you run the risk of pinching or cutting these O-rings. We have another reason that I should not be working on a car. Um, first of all, we have the Bosch injector here and we have the injector dynamic injector here. Um, it wasn't fitting, so I figured remove that and maybe it would go in. Wasn't the case. Put the cap back on. Didn't know why it wasn't fitting in. Realized this O-ring here was still in the car. So I was trying to put this injector on top of this O-ring, which it wasn't working. Finally realized it, went down in there with a pick, pulled out this O-ring, now the injector fits. However, where the injector goes, there is dirt, muck, grime that this injector was smushed in with. So upon pulling this out, putting Q-tip in there and trying to clean out that hole, I dropped the Q-tip. So now it's in there, halfway into the head, can barely see it, so um, frustration is rising. I'm gonna see if we can pull out the Q-tip with another Q-tip with some grease on it, maybe a vacuum cleaner 
otherwise, uh, we'll just see where we go. But I'm um, not too happy right now. Well, we were in search of the Q-tip. We used the house vacuum, we used a shop vac, we used a funnel, we used a hose taped up with duct tape to a funnel, to a vacuum cleaner, to a shop vac. That didn't work. Nothing was working. So we probably spent, oh, I don't know, an hour or so on it. And look what worked. After all is said and done, all this chaos, a straw shoved down in the hole, actually pulled out this stupid little Q-tip that was stuck and it can't focus. You get the idea. Nightmare. I am definitely not a mechanic. Well, after two, maybe three hours of messing around with this car, we got the two injectors on the driver's side installed. They're installed, they're in place. The fuel rail is put into place. So let's put the inner hole piping back in. Um, we have to work on the second set of injectors on the passenger side. And this is day two. Day two. I am definitely not a mechanic. Not a mechanic. And I have to remind myself that every single time I work on a car. So definitely, definitely not a mechanic. And yet I continue on. I keep doing it. So, without further ado, shall we get started? Let's go. Last one, still missing the gasket. Get that out of there. This is your friend. The passenger side isn't that bad. Once you get the intake and the filter out of the way, um, Loosen the expansion tank here for the turbo, just on a couple bolts, bungee corded out of the way, and you can see right down here, there's just two bolts holding it in. They're already out right there and right there, the fuel rail, and then there's one more bolt on the front. It's kind of hard to see, it's, it's down here, but pretty easy to do. This side is a lot easier, there's just not as many wiring harnesses and plugs in the way. So pull the fuel rail, and get the other two installed. So we got the passenger side all bolted in. Uh, you can kind of see the top of them down there. Little red guy sticking out. Not too bad. Another thing I want to address since we're in here and we have some of the pipes out of the way, it's kind of hard to see. But if you look down there, you can see the turbo. Let's see if I can get some light in there. Um, then you can see the red Perrin turbo inlet and then the, the clamp. Now the camp, clamp keeps sliding off of the turbo. So it creates a little air leak there. Now. Stay focused, thank you. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to loosen up the clamp here and try to get it to slide on because this needs to be flush with the turbo and that clamp needs to be off here. I mean, it's the clamp is on the hose, it's not even on the turbo inlet. So I'm gonna try to do that again. For some reason it keeps slipping. I've taken it off before, I've cleaned it with alcohol. Uh, I just, I'm just not sure why, maybe I'm putting too much clamping pressure on that clamp and it just keeps sliding off. So I'm going to tighten that up again and just watch it. That only took us two days, two days, yes, to put four fuel injectors in the Subaru. It took us two days. Well, I only worked on it a few hours the first day and a few hours the second day, but seriously, not a six hour job. No, definitely. This is why you need a wrench 
supervised. If you don't know what you're doing, you need someone to help you. So, now that the injectors are in the car, the last thing to do is to test them. However, the battery is completely dead. The car sits on a trickle charger every single day, and now that I go to test it, deader than a doornail. So, has almost zero volts in the battery, which doesn't sound right, two or three volts, but something must be wrong with the charger. Maybe it's draining the car, I don't know. So, this has been a fun episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, for my sanity, subscribe, turn on the post notifications so that you don't miss any of these fun episodes because I'm sure you're having fun. I hope you guys are. Thanks, until next time, see ya.